In this video, we're going to be comparing four Raspberry Pi 2 cases, so let's see which one comes out top. First up, we have the Pi Bow Coupe. The Pi Bow is a very slimline case for the Raspberry Pi, and unlike conventional cases, it does not actually cover the entire Raspberry Pi, only the sides and the bottom, which allows the USB and Ethernet port to protrude from the top of the case. The case is constructed from laser plastic and comes in a variety of colours. At first, I thought I would not really like the appearance of this case, but it has grown on me and I quite like the different style and appearance of it. Although I wouldn't choose this in a home theatre setup, it would seem more appropriate if you were going to tinker with it and use all of the extra ports on it since you do have access to those with this case. The Flirt case has a very solid construction as it's made from a solid aluminium shell with a matte rubberized plastic base and top. The aluminium finish gives the case a premium feel which is always a bonus. The case also comes with a built-in heat sink, which will let you do some overclocking, but I have not tested this myself. The case was very easy to construct, all you need to do is screw the four screws into the bottom of the case, and everything is secured. One thing I have to say about this case is it's not prone to fingerprints, but rather smudges from fingers which are only noticeable when you look up quite close to the case, but that can be quite an annoyance. The Flirt case is primarily advertised as being the home theatre case for the Raspberry Pi, and I think it suits that and other environments too. The price for this case is quite expensive, but that can be justified by the materials used. The Short Crust Plus is a fairly minimal case for the Pi. It comes in two different colour options for the base, which are black and white, and this allows you to have a little bit of customization on what your Pi can look like. The top of the case is a smooth, glossy finish, which can turn into a bit of a fingerprint magnet, but it can be easily cleaned, and the main base is made of a rougher matte finish which I think matches the top perfectly. The case also has plenty of ventilation for the Pi on the bottom of the case, and the release trigger is also there. The release trigger allows you to easily remove the Pi from the case, and I think the cost of the case is decent as it is made from high quality plastic. The case also comes with rubber feet to stop it from sliding on your desk, and also comes with screw holes on the bottom of the case if you want to mount it somewhere. The Helix is no ordinary Pi case. It's made from MDF, which features a flexible shell around the core of the case. The quality of the case is decent, although if you're disassembling the case, you will want to be careful as the case is quite fragile. But once you put your Pi in the case and it's all up and running, I think it looks quite good having a case that doesn't look like the majority of the cases you can buy. Inside the case, there are some supports for the Pi, but I feel like there should be one that sits on the top of the Pi just to make it that bit more secure. The asking price for this case isn't much, so if you need a cheap case, then this could be the one for you. I think that if the pins holding the shell of the case were made a bit bigger and there were a few more supports to hold the Pi securely into place, I think this would be a great case. So now, let's see what came out top. So in first place, we have the Short Crust Plus. In the runner-up section, we have the Flurk case. For best value, we have the Pi Bow Coupe, and as a worthy contender, we have the Mod My Pi Helix. But that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe and like. I will see you in the next video.